hello and uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Lake Show. This is uh, Dr. Paula Lake. I'm um, back here after uh, several months of being away, taking some time to recenter and recalibrate um, before um, I launch back into the program, which has been great. You know, sometimes we need holidays from things we do, even though we like them. So I am happy to be back. And uh, uh, today, as a, a reflection on what I like to do, is to provide little psych bits. Psych bits means it might not take an hour, it might take a few minutes. I know everyone has a busy schedule, and perhaps you might be able to take those couple minutes just to listen to a little psych bit for yourself. Um, today, what I wanted to discuss was trauma. Um, trauma is something I know that everyone is familiar with, especially now in the media. I find that it's, it's very pervasive and discussed in a lot of different uh, arenas, uh, certainly relevant to some of the issues that are happening today as well. Um, so this is uh, also true to my heart because I've done a lot of work with trauma. I uh, started off in my early career with uh, sexual abuse survivors and then progressively moved on and working with um, a lot of trauma with RCMP and veterans. Um, and, uh, you know, the, so the subtler forms of trauma, the everyday life trauma that we all encounter, the, the, um, those small experiences that impact us over time. Uh, sometimes it might not even be one event. It might be cumulative effect of many events that have, have taken its toll over time. So I think it's important for us to understand about trauma. And I think one of the reasons I wanted to make have this conversation is to illuminate um, some of the ideas that we have around trauma, um, the subtleties of trauma, um, the nuances of trauma. Um, you know, we associate trauma often with PTSD. I'm sure many of you have heard of PTSD. And often we think of it as something that affects people fairly profoundly, can be extremely disruptive to their life, um, might actually impair their ability to cultivate relationships, to self-regulate, and maybe even um, establish relationships and, and a success in your life in general. Um, and that is something that we deal with a lot and certainly something I've dealt with a lot on the disruptive end of trauma. But what I'd like people to understand is not all trauma is alike um, and we can have uh, varying types of trauma. Um, uh, just to illuminate you, for those that don't know, it's when we go through a traumatic event, and this would be for the average person, if let's say you were in a motor vehicle accident or um, you encountered an adverse experience, uh, which is one of the criteria for uh, trauma, um, and the other criteria would be that it's overwhelming your resources at the moment to cope. But let's just assume that you went through an experience and you noticed that for at least a month that you had some symptoms that were present. Um, that would be fairly expected, and we would actually have a term for that. It's called acute stress disorder. And often, for the most of us, we go through an experience for um, that can affect us negatively for that one month, and we find that those symptoms start to dissolve. So intrusive symptoms, thinking about the event, being disturbed by it, having emotional reactions to it, um, trying not to have emotional reactions to it, is all part and parcel of, of going through a negative traumatic event. One thing I'd like to clarify is um, that um, if after that month you have continued to note similar experiences tied to post-traumatic stress disorder, that would be the time that we can diagnose it. That would be the time when we're looking at it. But I also want people to understand that not all trauma that we experience results in these kind, this kind of symptomatology uh, at that severe range, that there is what we call big T's and little T's. There's the bigger traumas, which are life-threatening situations or terrifying uh, circumstances that occur to you all the way to the more the, the smaller events it could be um, you know a rejection you'd experience at a certain age which frankly I, I would I would question whether that is small but we might be inclined to dismiss certain experiences that we've had and so you know when I looked up what the definition of trauma is, um, 
one of the things, if you actually look at the definition of trauma, is it has to do with an adverse experience where your um, uh, resources are overwhelmed. And perhaps at that time, it's a struggle to cope. Um, you know, and those can certainly have a, a long-term impact on us. But what I find interesting is there can be situations where on the face of it, um, someone may look like they've actually recovered or they're resilient. They may actually look like they're doing okay. And if you actually went through the severity of the criteria we have with PTSD, they might actually even um, be functioning relatively well in the sense that they're working really hard or that they, by all societal standards, they're managing their life. We can look at them from the outside and say, wow, they're doing actually really well, or look at them succeed, or um, look how well they perform. Um, but one of the things that we don't really take into account is the more subtle forms of the impact of a traumatic experience. Um, and maybe not so subtle. Maybe, in fact, it's actually quite profound how it might impact somebody. Um, to give you an example, you go through a traumatic experience Sometimes, especially at a certain point in your life, could be when you're younger, and maybe you've learned how to um, exile those feelings, to keep those experiences at bay, not have them intrude on your day-to-day -day experience. Maybe you become masterful at putting those experiences aside and trying not to think about it, focusing on the strategic ways to move forward in life. But this is where I would invite people to start thinking about how trauma inf impacts them. Um, even if you're not suffering from the severity of PTSD and the symptoms of trauma, adverse negative experiences may change the course of your life. And without your awareness of it, you may be driven by forces that were traumatic in your life without fully, fully knowing or being aware of that, maybe perhaps sometime in your lifetime. And in fact, we have a term that's called delayed post-traumatic stress disorder. And I've encountered this in, in a number of different individuals where they may have been actually ultra-functioning for a period of 20 years even, or 10 years, and then something happens in their lives that erupts all the previous traumatic experiences they've had suddenly surface for them. So this is something we don't talk about a lot. We often talk about the more obvious and pervasive symptoms of trauma. Um, but what happens is sometimes we become so good at exiling the negative emotions in order to function. We develop these protective mechanisms after a traumatic experience. And that helps keep some of those feelings about what we went through at bay, but it might still be driving our experiences. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's assume that you went through a really traumatic rejection in your childhood. Um, perhaps you've had bullying. Uh, maybe you weren't in a great family environment. And you learned that um, you discovered through the course of those experiences that there's something that you can channel um, your, your uh, let's say, energy into that brings on some positive experiences. Perhaps you might become the jokester and people start to love your jokes. In fact, maybe you are so good at, at having humor about your life that you decide to become a comedian. And you discover that, wow, this is amazing. As, as I put humor to all these experiences, all my pessimism and skepticism and and the rage and upset that I might have about that experience, I get to ex exile it to, to the extent that now I found ways to achieve and receive love. But foundationally doesn't mean that you've actually resolved your trauma or that it's not lurking in the background, that if perhaps you might notice, perhaps one of the ways you cope is through drinking. Drinking might be something that also helps the comedian manage the emotions and exile them. And so by all appearances, we can look at this successful comedian, let's assume, um, who's functioning relatively well. But 
in when they actually really stop to take a moment and reflect on what might be going on inside, instead of exiling, instead of pushing away, um, that that trauma may be a source that um, has driven their experiences, but is still tormenting them at some level. Um, and I, I think it's good for us, and this is why it's important for us to reflect on our life experiences, because often what we don't realize is they, st they start to drive the choices that we make. Um, you know, one example would be, um, you know, perhaps in relationships. Um, you know, if you've witnessed perhaps a lot of struggles in, in relationships, if you've had your own relationship trauma, if you were hurt by a partner who maybe betrayed you, you had your heart set on them, that you start to develop more protective mechanisms around relationships. Maybe you stop trusting in relationships. You start sheltering yourself from getting close to people. Now, on the front of it, you might be very successful in your career and people may still have admiration for you, but they may not recognize that you're all walled up. And that wall is the result of a traumatic experience that you may have gone that you're really not acknowledging. That is why I think it is important for all of us to take a little bit of time and take time to examine. You know, you might have heard, um, I heard it from, I read it was from two different authors, an unexamined life is not a life worth living. And I actually think it's an important step that I hope that in our culture we can start to cultivate. And one of the reasons I'm so grateful with the concept of the practices we have now, like mindfulness and Eastern traditions and yoga, is that they there are forces that allow you and have you learn to um, sit and sit with self rather than ignoring and exiling and just functioning. We're in a society that is highly focused on productivity. And what happens is you may have had um, an, an impact uh, related to your traumatic experience, but because you have become a highly productive individual, um, it may give an illusion that you've actually healed and recovered some of those areas inside that you haven't had a chance to, to address or look at. So I do think it's really important for us all to perhaps have a mind shift in our society about um, allowing time for us to examine um, what is happening in our inner landscape and how it's changing and how our decisions are changing as a result of our negative experiences. You know, things like cynicism and mistrust um, very often have a foundation. There's often a personal experience that leads to what we would call a personality trait of mistrust. And, and so these things can't be changed and often are self-perpetuating. So if I develop after a series of, let's say, um, fairly negative traumatic interpersonal events, um, I form a formulation of, of what people are like and what I can expect from them that very often that that will end up impacting the kind of partners I choose. So again, I just want to encourage you for uh, this small little portion today to think about what can I do in my life that is going to allow me to reflect on um, how I've been impacted. And if something is not really working for you, and maybe I'm, I'm asking you not to think about just about whether you're a high-functioning person, but if something in your spirit feels a little bit broken and you're just ignoring it and, and uh, judging your evaluating how well you're doing by how well you're functioning. Um, it's important to pay attention to that little question of unfulfillment that you have inside and and maybe if you're experiencing a repeated pattern and struggle in relationships or some part of you doesn't feel whole, then that might be another opportunity to explore internally. And so that's one thing, message I want to leave for you today is um, take the time, uh, find a place if you've never had a good experience with reflective time and if you do everything to avoid it, I would actually say that that's a little bit of a red flag and you might want to start to ask yourself, what is it I'm worried about if I take a little bit of time for myself? So with that, I, I wish you all well and I hope that you have an opportunity to think about uh, where you're at in your life and
how some of the experiences may have been impacting you. And I wish you all the best. And until next time, uh, keep well and take good care.